Welcome to Revved Up for Sunday, a lectionary podcast from St. Mark's Episcopal Church in New Canaan, Connecticut. I'm John Kennedy. I'm Elizabeth Garnsey. I'm Rob Schwartz. Today we're continuing through the gospel according to Matthew, and we have Jesus teaching about forgiveness. He talks a little bit about the, the arithmetic of forgiveness, as well as raising the very interesting question of whether God's forgiveness is conditional. <laughs> This is the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Wow. Okay. That's a lighthearted one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really takes a turn. Um, so I guess we should situate this uh, in, in context. We're continuing along through Matthew's gospel, and we're continuing from Jesus' teaching about the church, which we began last time with mm -hmm. uh, his, his teaching about how to handle conflict in the yep. church, and now he's talking right. about forgiveness. So what do we think about Peter's question here? I mean, you know, is he being stingy or generous with his offer to forgive somebody who sins against him seven times? <laughs> uh, I think that, that Peter, you know, um, there's a meaning to that number, and mm -hmm. Peter is thinking he's being extra extravagant yeah. by, by suggesting seven times because it's almost yeah. double what the council Two, might not have three. recommended. As many as seven. As many as seven? Yeah. Because the council, I mean, in the Jewish law, there was this this idea that you could forgive four times, you know, and then it could you could be done with that and finally okay. get your, your payment back. But so Peter's like seven, you know, really almost doubling. So Pete, Jesus's response is like, just stop counting, you know? Mm. And um, there's so much to be said. I wonder, may, now I've, I, it's nice to be back with, with you guys, actually. I've been gone for two, two podcasts. Yeah, Elizabeth said enough of these um, two guys. I got I to gotta hop on here and write the oh, ship. No, no. Not, <laughs> at all, not at all. I got to catch up. But I, I really, I want just me, for my own sake, to review the whole, the chapter of yeah. 18, because it's, sure. it's really oh. this sort of um, aside, and not really the way he tells it, but Jesus probably wasn't talking about the church and, you know, con church conduct because it mm -hmm. didn't really exist yet. Mm -hmm. But Matthew is, is framing it among, in Jesus' teaching. And um, so in the chapter, the whole chapter of 18 is like the handbook for Christian conduct, yeah. right? And yeah. we've got leaders being humble and teachable as children in the first part of the chapter. And, and in the second part of the chapter, Jesus' followers are supposed to tend to their own moral conduct, like mm -hmm. not become stumbling blocks to one another. Um, in the next part, they're 
it's the parable of the lost sheep where Jesus is telling them to cultivate care for one another so much so that you'll you'll leave the whole group just to find the one who's gone astray and um, and then of course we had persist in resolving your conflict and now we're here at this ultimate test of you know whatever happens be prepared to forgive each other a lot and without stopping mm -hmm. and that's what's going to keep the system going yeah. right so i don't yeah. think peter quite understands he's he's got this great partial understanding that mm -hmm. we're supposed to forgive even more than other people yeah but he doesn't understand that there's no limit mm -hmm. to their forgiveness yet and yes. most of us don't understand that either well, and but that's where i think definitely. he's getting at and it's funny with peter because i feel like he you know for like we talked about before he he had this one moment where he's you know, called the rock on which we'll build the church and all that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, get behind me, Satan. He's yeah. a stumbling block. And so I think this is Peter kind of trying to be like, okay, I got this. I'm going to get back in good graces seven times. How about yeah. that, Jesus? <laughs> and like you that's said, the funny. fact that Jesus is throwing out a number that's like, mm -hmm. look, like, don't keep track of how much you're forgiving. Like, right. it's, the numbers are, are, you know, symbolic in ways, but it's, it's really more of something that's mm -hmm. unattainable or, or to the point where you're not even thinking about it. Yeah, it's really the the gas that keeps the engine running, right? Like like forgive without forgiveness the whole system falls apart. And I think that's where Jesus is ushering in this entirely different kind of kingdom and it's it's based on that. It's not based on keeping score, it's not based on vengeance or like exacting punishment for wrongdoings. The whole system rises and falls on all of us being willing to keep forgiving one another, mm. and keep bringing each other back, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a revolution. It's counter to our evolutionary and cultural programming then and a, as now. Uh, sadly, you know, 2,000 years on, um, it's, it's the rare exception um, to the rule that, that people actually live like this. Um, you know, uh, I, I was just talking to um, somebody uh, in, in Philadelphia the other day, and he was talking about uh, how in the Anglican Church of Kenya, there's this really great blessing in their um, in their liturgy that uh, has them, you know, casting all their troubles and problems on the cross. And the origin of this is that um, when missionaries first arrived in Kenya, they uh, encountered uh, tribal peoples, um, some of whom had a practice of, uh, on some regular basis, casting all of their troubles and concerns on the tribe to their west. Oh, wow. <laughs> And well you know, well without done. getting into all the <laughs> without getting into all the details, it eventually um, was transformed into something quite beautiful. Cast your problems onto the cross. Mm -hmm. But um, but anyway, just to say that who knows if the tribes <laughs> of the west even ever did anything to right. the tribes right. of the east. It's just such a human tendency to right. not like the other group. Yeah. All the more all the more when they've yeah. given you some reason for it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know. Uh, whether or not this is truly adaptive behavior, we seem to think it is. We mm -hmm. seem to think it's important for our survival that we get back uh, or at least exclude or cut off uh, people who have wronged us. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Jesus is saying, no, you know, here's a new way. Here's a totally different way. And in so many ways, Jesus, I think, is leading us into the next step of human um, evolution, even planetary, cosmic evolution, whatever, we can't get into all that right now, but <laughs> certainly, you know, human evolution, when it comes to our relationships with one another um, and the world around us, that um, this is something new, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, it's, it's of a piece with uh, love your enemy, it's of a piece with put down your sword, it's, um, it's, it's the inbreaking of the kingdom, right, and this is, this is really tough to do, I mean, you know, back to Peter, and, and whether he's stingy or generous, I mean, I don't know if, if I've, you know, I, I, I don't keep track of how many times people have wronged me. But if I got to seven with any particular person, I would be like, man, you know, <laughs> I might be getting, I might feel like I'm getting to keep, the end of my rope. Keep doing this? Yeah, <laughs> right, especially if it's the same thing, the same sort of thing. So, yeah, 77, or you're, it could be translated as well, like 70 times seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously it means, yeah, don't keep, don't keep count, although I'm sure some, some literalist somewhere Biblical literalists has like kept count, right. but that's another I've got story. The formula, and <laughs> it's just it's just astonishing that that Jesus is you know is he's giving a program for a new humanity here. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, and and one of the the 
you know, the big things about forgiveness in general. I think sometimes we treat forgiveness as it means forgetting that, you know, uh, something happened and yeah. it's just like, oh, nope, it's in the past. And it doesn't necessarily do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've got things like, um, like after apartheid and, and South Africa, you know, they had the, the reconciliation thing mm-hmm. where it was really about recognizing these wrongdoings and things like that. And there was forgiveness and whatnot, but a lot of that was, mm-hmm. was, um, you know, just uh, acknowledging things. And, and so there's like forgiveness and grace, but also accountability. There's, and we kind of get into that in the story. But right. the, the other thing I wanted to say about forgiveness that, that we don't often think about, I, I, I always say it's more about you than it is about the person who wronged you. Um, that it's forgiveness by holding on to something. It's only hurting yourself. You know, that someone said it's like drinking poison and waiting for it to harm the other person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, mm-hmm. and so I think that there's, you know, again, by following Jesus's way that he kind of lays out here, it's freeing us from mm-hmm. the things that, that bind us, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, especially yeah. in a chapter with all this binding and loosing. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. That feels like a good segue into the parable. It does, I think so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, yeah. I mean, always the, on the, the spot. The forgiveness teaching is hard to do, easy to understand, yeah. relative to this parable that follows, perhaps, when mm-hmm. we really take seriously the the um, the warning for what happens if we don't forgive. Mm-hmm. So, how do we make sense of this? This par, you know, the parable uh, is about a man who's been extravagantly forgiven. You mm-hmm. know, something yeah. completely unthinkable. And um, you know, we could get into the weeds with what this guy's actually up to, what his business is. And some commentators talk about how the word slave here can really be translated minister, or like this might be a pagan uh, king who had sure. ta- minions collecting taxes from his large mm-hmm. region, and and this amount of money, you know, is realistic if if he was assigned a huge territory Mm -hmm. um and at the end of the year he would be owing this amount to his king Mm -hmm. um and he whatever happened it he doesn't have the money and but still it's like a billion dollars in today's money right it's a crazy amount yeah yeah so to have this king sort of just write it off or make it a loan is just like staggering so i think that there's something happening here where the minister or the slave doesn't receive that in a way that's transformative and Mm -hmm. and with jesus the 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 message is that kind of you know the extravagant mercy that we're extended by god all the time every minute um if we don't experience it if we don't really like understand it it's not transformative right and so i think he's missing he just missed the experience somehow that didn't get him to rewrite his own story yeah and he's going on to just lord over the people that owe him these piddling amounts yeah right 100 denarii is like one one day's wages so yeah. there's nothing compared to what he owed right like the king doesn't want this guy to go to prison or whatever he doesn't want to screw up the system or something so he's he's like i think jesus is illustrating what he means by forgiveness runs the ship yeah. you know and if the guy isn't going to keep it going it's just going to be so disruptive and um but clearly he, he hasn't experienced something that makes him go and do likewise. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's kind of the message. It's kind of like he gets the, the it's kind of like he responds to the king in like the ways of, of our world that we're used to. Like, you did me a favor. All right, I'm in your debt. You know, I owe you one, like to the king. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead of like, oh, wow, someone did this for me. I should do likewise. Right. I should oh, pass yeah, it good on. Point. That's what and, you know, said. and so yeah. it, it, it's, it's just a transactional mm-hmm. thing instead of it continues to pay it forward mm-hmm. and forward and forward. Yeah. And I think that's how we're supposed to look at our lives in relation to God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, here we are, right. and we're supposed to carry that with us. Turn yeah. and get, pass it on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the way that this is composed is to have the situation, the relationship of the, the first debtor to the king uh, mirror what's going on with that debtor to his debtor. Um, you know, he says, they say the same thing to the one that they owe money to. They say, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Mm-hmm. That's what the first one says to the king and he's forgiven. His huge billion dollar debt. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. he experiences himself in the same situation with the roles reversed, the fe- his fellow slave says, have patience with me and I will pay you. And he does not. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even register with him that, oh, I was on the other side of this just like, you know, a minute right. ago or whatever. And, uh, and the forgiveness I received mattered to me. Mm-hmm. You know, it changed my life. Um, it, it 
made made an impression. Mm-hmm. Clearly, clearly not. And I think this is a, a warning that you know um, we think. We, I mean, Augustine has this nice commentary on this passage that says, you know, Jesus teaches us basically two things um, in terms of our dealings with other people: forgive and be generous. Mm-hmm. Because um, that's what, if we're seeking anything from God, we're seeking God's forgiveness and we're seeking God's generosity. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we don't understand that those are given to us uh, in such a way that it's the, f- the flow is supposed to continue through us mm-hmm. to all our dealings with other people, um, we're, we're, in, we're in grave area and, and indeed grave danger, right? And I think that's something to really think about here because um, Christians, you know, people in the church are not always good at practicing forgiveness or generosity. Obviously, forgiveness is more the focus of today's passage. And... Um, it's not only unfortunate when we do, don't do that, it's dangerous for us. Mm-hmm. Um, in some way, Jesus is talking about the spiritual danger um, that, that we run into when, when we don't uh, pay it forward, as, as Rob was, was talking about. Um, so, so this, I think, takes us to the question of, uh, that, that I raised uh, in a somewhat facetious, but not entirely manner, uh, at the beginning of the podcast, which is, is God's forgiveness conditional? Mm -hmm. Because obviously this guy doesn't seem all that forgiven at the end of the passage. He's forgiven earlier, but (laughs) because of what he does after, he's tortured. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I don't, I I, I think think? that there's a really decisive answer to that, which is no, uh, for me. And because in the whole of Matthew, um, and and all the gospels, there's this overarching story of Jesus and how, you know, the drama is God extends this incredible mercy to us, no matter what. I mean, we haven't maybe even awakened to the fact that we need it, but it's already there for the taking, and we were invited to live into this freedom that we have to commune with God and and forgive ourselves and forgive one another. Communing, you know, communing in freedom and and second chances and all that stuff. And that when we reject that, you know, the part of the drama is that that the, the rejection of it crashes the whole train. You know, it's like we're subject to our own. That's what's conditional is, you know, we don't have to accept this, you know, this way of living. But if we don't, it's it doubles down on the hell that we're already living in. You know, I mean, we don't really know that we're living in a hell. Mm-hmm. And that can sound really, I don't know, old timey religion and stuff, but I think that you don't, we don't realize that we could be so much more free in ourselves, in our own skin, with one another. You know, if we know we're going to let each other off the hook and just be, you know, walking each other towards Mm -hmm. God, you know, I don't know if it was Ram Dass said, we're, we just, we're just all just walking Mm -hmm. each other home, right? right? But we don't have that outlook and so th- when we reject we like experience the fullness of our bondage to you know this way of like keeping score and not even forgiving ourselves not accepting mm-hmm. the fact that we have this incredible spacious mercy to live within mm-hmm. you know and graciousness and beauty and harmony and I think of it with the earth we're, we're so separated that we don't realize the communion that we can have with with nature and we're just ruining it you know yeah so anyway that's i feel like there's no conditional feature of of god's mercy i mean that's not what the program is <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what i took away from it too less less about saying okay well god will you know if 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 you do this god will punish you and fiery furnace or you know whatever Mm -hmm. and and more about okay well if this is the path you've chosen to walk this you know this is the the you know this is the hell as you're saying like this is the hell you've kind of Mm -hmm. chosen for yourself Mm -hmm. um less less uh uh, something upon you kind of yeah um yeah Yeah. i really like those interpretations and i'm i'm on board with them but i struggle with the last verse here Mm. so my heavenly father will do to you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Now, I, I take this as a metaphor on some level, but, um, but just, if anything, to you know, have fun with being devil's advocate here. Um, mm-hmm. I, I am curious about how we you know, interpret that uh, in a way that doesn't seem to totally turn it into something else, because it, it's giving God some agency here in, in the, the suffering of the unforgiving debtor and... Um, 
I mean, the way I look at it is is just of a piece with Matthew as a whole that, um, you know, Jesus is the new Moses. He's the Messiah leading God's people, gathering God's people, um, and and leading them to uh, the new the new promised land. And 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 Matthew has this overriding eschatology that God is doing something in history. God is moving history and human life and, and planetary life, you know, our, our created life as we know it, towards something good and something new. But the thing is that to exist in this basically fully realized kingdom of God, um, you need to kind of play by the rules on some level. You have mm-hmm. to wear the wedding garment, to use a metaphor from another parable, that when the wedding feast is thrown, like, this is great, everybody's invited, um, but you have to have the right clothing on. And the right clothing is forgiving, is being generous. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you'll, you'll simply find yourself on the outside of this good thing um, that, that is taking place, that everybody is invited into. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think there's a yeah. vernacular to Matthew that's always a little un- uneasy. Definitely. You know, yeah. he's famous for the weeping and the gnashing exactly. of teeth mm-hmm. and casting yeah. into outer darkness and here, you know, handing him over to be tortured until he'd pay in- his entire debt. Yeah. But I think it's it's contained in the, in the Matthean style. It is. It's radical yeah. and alarming and awakening. Yeah. But it doesn't fit with the life and death and resurrection and forgiveness of Jesus. So, I mean, at least in our own vernacular, Mm -hmm. but so I just don't think, I don't think that Jesus is saying, you know, God's going to torture you until you pay up. Mm -hmm. That's just not the message. That's not his mission. That's not the kingdom he's ushering in. Um, But it, it, it's like, God will, will let you be. He'll, he'll let you make your own Mm -hmm. choices. And then we get to, accept the consequences and yeah, one of my professors always said if you're ever trying to figure out you know if you're kind of confused about these things just look at the character of god throughout what's consistent with with that character and then kind of use that as your guide yeah. through these things and and so you know if you're you're struggling with that i think mm-hmm. it, it, you know grace is what it comes down to forgiveness and um and i know uh uh, Jan on the other side of our camera here today. It's weird not being me being the one holding up signs for people <laughs> telling us where we're at. But um, I, I, I thought I'd bring up my my shirt. Now I'm having fun with this, trying to match up our shirt, my shirt <laughs> right? with our yeah, themes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Electionary shirt. That's collection. right. So so Rob's shirt of the week. We'll get a little jingle. No, but um, so I, I put this one on today. That's God loves the people you hate. Um, and I don't really hate a lot of people besides maybe the New York Yankees and the New England Patriots. Oh. How's that for a hot take? <laughs> cut, uh, cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've just lost our whole tri-state area audience now. Right. No, but um, listenership yeah, down to two. I, I wouldn't say. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say. Uh, I wouldn't say um, it, it, less about hate for me. But some people also just make it very hard to love, yeah. you know, and 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 still trying to love despite those struggles. And um, I feel like the the good news for me in all of it is that when I look at that and I say on the days that it's hard for me to love certain people, God still loves them. I flip mm-hmm. that around and I say, well, on the days that maybe I'm hard to love, it's nice to know that God still loves me. Mm-hmm. And and that's the good news right there for me is that 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 love is, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. without bounds. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it can feel a little abstract or sound abstract to say, you know, forgiveness is what we're all about. Forgive. But when it comes right down to your own daily life and you, maybe you've ever you've been ghosted or you've been like someone's turned their back on you mm-hmm. or, or there's conflict and two people aren't working it out. They're talking to other people. They're making triangles. You know, I mean, that's where it happens all over the church. It happens in our own Definitely. parish. It happens all the time. And um, I think that's that's really where it comes down to is are we willing to not do that? And yeah. last week's gospel spells that out. Like mm-hmm. go to the person directly, make a line, not a triangle, you know, mm-hmm. make a circle and like make sure you're dealing directly to solve your conflicts. Because if we don't, we're, we're actually going to just crumble into yeah. another earthly situation you know yeah yeah amen and yeah and i think this this leads us to the question of of where do we get the strength to do this right because um it's one thing to understand it and to intend Mm -hmm. to practice it it's another thing to when these things happen when we feel uh, hurt or stung in some way um to really from the heart jesus as it's beautiful phrase here 
forgive your brother or sister from the heart, right? Yes. Not some sort of compulsory yeah. legalistic observance of a rule, but from the heart. Mm-hmm. And to me, it occurs that, that the way to get this power, to get the strength, to get this capacity is to seek our ultimate validation, our ultimate affirmation from the source, from God directly, and uh, therefore not to be so needy, right? In yeah. terms of how do, do those people like me? Are they including me? You know, <laughs> did they slight me in some way? Um, those blows land a bit more softly mm-hmm. when we're not seeking from them what only God can really give us. Um, and with that, I see that we're at wrap up time just about. So um, I hope this has been interesting and edifying and. Um, we're so glad that, that you, you are journeying with us. This is really a privilege, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.